Hi, my name is Matthew Seibert. I'm an assistant professor of landscape architecture. I'll be teaching the uh, research studio Milton Land Lab, a mesocosm for ways of knowing through situated making, uh, with the student instructional assistant being Theodore Teichman. I also want to give a quick acknowledgement to some independent study students from uh, the fall who are working on, 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 on the site. Um, Reed Farnsworth, Hannah Brown, Rebecca Hinch, Lizzie Needham, um, as well as Theodore. Their work will uh, sort of be featured throughout the, the video. And so uh, with, with the world increasingly enveloped by crises, climate change, social inequality, global pandemic, the calls for new ways forward are, are quite plentiful. I mean, we have the Green New Deal, we have green capitalism, geoengineering, rights of nature. There's really many bold paths forward that have been theorized and described, and others already seen as sort of existing precedent, lived for generations, such as South America's indigenous Buen Vivir philosophy. And though some are rather limited in their scope, focusing largely on a single domain like economics or engineering, others are much more promisingly situated uh, within an ontology or worldview, kind of an understanding new futures as, as necessarily woven throughout all facets and domains of life. Um, and so these on these worldviews, I mean, they're in, in the practices of being that accompany them cannot simply be sort of replicated and relocated across geographies, but rather must be sort of born of place, worlded through a durational co-constitutive constitutive exchange between people and environment. Um, and so the, the question emerges, how do we develop um, um, how do we develop the, these ontologies within or these alternative ontologies within a dom dominant worldview defined deep, uh, by deeply ingrained dichotomies, such as nature, culture, mind, matter, organic, inorganic? And then more specifically, what does this mean for landscape architectural practice? And so this studio positions um, it, itself uh, with the argument that uh, landscape practice and research, um, in order to maximize its potential in affecting change, it needs space and time at scale to study and experiment with how ways of knowing and, and thinking through making cultivate new spatial practices that thus produce kind of new ontologies for a more promising future. And so this design uh, build studio will we're spend um, uh, a majority of our time kind of outside um, at site, which I'll describe briefly. Um, and the studio proposes just that, this, this designated site of scalar significance that with student-led design research at sort of a one-to-one -one scale, um, creates new knowledge and prototypes new worlds through landscape interaction, relation, interrogation, and, and imagination. And so the approximately 172 acres of, of Milton Airfield, which will be our site, um, and it's located <clears throat> about eight miles east of a school and really provides um, a unique, unique opportunity. Um, it's historically disturbed. I mean, I think at one point in time it was a farm, then it was a World War II airstrip, to its even its present day utilization by the Ravana, Ravana Radio Control Club's model airplane runway and the School of Engineering's Baja track. Um, it also has frontage along the, the Ravana River. It's, I mean, it's forested in parts, meadowed in others. It really provides for the site, uh, a, a great site for extended study, large scale intervention, and intimate engagement with landscape media. And so understood as, as a mesocosm, uh, Milton provides a, a site of scale, again, in both time and space, with a degree of control, meaning it's sort of this middle ground between the sort of relative absence of control and its sort of general field survey and kind of an absolute control in a traditional laboratory experiment has a sort of in-between, which uh, has great effects. And then this provides for a, a meaningful engagement with the dynamic media of landscape. And so whereas architecture school is often ubiquitous fabrication lab affords a place to, to fabricate with largely static media, there's rarely, if ever, space to intervene, manipulate, and observe the lively material of, of landscape, um, vegetation, hydrology, et cetera. And so moreover, Milton as is landscape lab affords a mesocosm to investigate alternative ways of knowing, not substituted, but rather complementary to Western empiricism and scientism, that, that cultivate these alternative worldviews and ways of, of being to meet a rapidly shifting world. And so as a foundational epistemology to probe, the, the studio will task students with researching and designing a mesocosm investigation to construct, observe, and document over the spring semester. And then in parallel to this likely conventional objectivist semester-long study, we'll, we'll orbit a series of uh, correspondence exercises, a term from anthropologist uh, Tim Engold that talks about sort of the setting up of a relation with the world, um, commonly by thinking through making. 
Um, and so the, these additional sort of overlaid exercises will, um, will be guided prompts to kind of catalyze alternative strategies of inquiry through situated kind of making with. And so then these other ways of knowing will supplement, challenge, and or reorient the core mesocosm investigation with the liberals being as much, if not more, documentation of process as they are our final product. Thank you. Hope to see you in the studio.